Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. And this is a special Pens on the Road because I am at Icelandic State Park near Cavalier, North Dakota. So, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens and inks, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And what's a little known wonder in your state? Let us know down in the comments. So, these are the pens that I had inked up this week. Um, took a little trip last week. Most of the pens I took with me are emptied out, so I got to ink up some new ones. And then I also uh, filmed a few videos since I got home, so that microphone trouble is brand new tonight. I don't know if it's the heat or what. But anyway, from left to right we have the Super Rotax. Still don't have that reverb sound effect. I have the Rotax uh, Silver and Black. I have a Kaveco Lilliput, which is the only pen I took with me last week that's still inked up. Uh, Parker Frontier, Platinum President, Platinum 3776, Kaveco V14S, and finally, the Schaefer Legacy 2. Or, no it isn't, sorry. Schaefer Balance 350. Did y'all hear that noise? There was a storm threatening, but it didn't really do anything. Maybe something blew down. Huh, weird. As always, I will be doing my writing samples in this BOMO, I'm sorry, still in that habit for many, many years of doing it, in this cognitive surplus notebook. Also, while I was uh, touring, at the advice of several of you to deal with this slatted desk, I bought, I found this for like $5, so I decided to splurge. And yeah, last week's pens in use was a little bit of a lie because uh, I was traveling then, so I filmed it before I left, set it to publish. Um, the Super Rotax is getting close to empty, despite its stinginess with ink. Just a very nice, fairly plain pen, but with some neat little design features. So this is June 2nd, 2021, and that's an extra fine, right? Can't remember what I wrote down. Probably. Uh, the ink in it is Parker Quink. Washable blue. Um, Parker Quink Washable Blue is just a nice dependable ink. Um, I like it because, well, it's cheap. Washes out of stuff. It's a uh, it's a decent color, what can I say? Reliable, behaves well on even low quality paper. Is it my favorite ink? No. In fact, when I bought my very first fountain pen, it came with several cartridges of Parker Quink Washable Blue, and I was just like, no! So, one of my first purchases for my new fountain pen at nine or ten years old was some, par some cartridges of Parker Quink Black. Uh, this next pen is the Rotax Silver and Black that I reviewed this week. Now, it has been emptied and refilled since I filmed the writing sample part of that. Uh, not with Parker Quink Washable Blue. Yes, I L. Um, as several people noticed, it definitely has a bit more character to its writing than this uh, Super Rotax. I don't know what the nib size in this is either. Fine. Well, oh, extra fine. It's carved on the turning knob. Okay, this ink is not Parker Quink washable blue because 
it's for first impressions so gotta give you something else so this is pelican 4001 royal blue which admittedly did come out of a Parker Quink washable blue bottle, but uh, it isn't. So this ink is also supposedly washable. Uh, claim I'm planning to test next week. Yeah, we'll see. Actually, that ink has a lot of the same traits as the uh, Pelican, or I'm sorry, as the Parker Quink, so. And if it starts blooping when it goes empty, I'll be glad for those traits, because it'll be easier to wash it out of whatever it bloops on. My next pen is the lovely Caveco Lilliput. I absolutely hate writing long sessions with this, but this is a very nice pen for just writing quick jotted notes. And by the end of my trip last week, I was down to writing with just this pen. Which should tell you something. Basically, I wasn't really using it until I had to. So the ink I put in it was a cartridge of diamine ancient copper. It's not a bad pen. It's just not a very comfortable pen for long writing sessions. It does the job it's intended for, which is to be a pocket pen that, uh, you know, you can pull out and write quick notes with it while you're hiking. Like, uh, you, want, you think up a thought while you're out there hiking and you can quick jot it down. I mean, you carry a notebook in your pocket at all times too, don't you? I do. My next pen, if I can grab it here, my next pen is inked up with a platinum carbon black because I'm using it to address envelopes. So this is the Parker Frontier. has a medium nib in it. Uh, kind of think of this pen reminds me a bit of the Parker Sonnet. Might have to ink one of those up next just to compare them. Uh, the ink in this is Platinum Carbon Black, which once it dries is very waterproof. Oops, I totally butchered spelling that. And I'm totally butchered spelling that. Yeah, waiting till too late at night again. Because all the other stuff I'm stuffing into this video, doggone, this thing has taken a long time to put together. Why do that to myself? I don't know. But now I'm extra distraught because I don't have my microphone for the driving part of the video, which is really what I was looking forward to using it for. Hmm. So this pen just kind of sat home, did not go with me on the trip, and it still has a little ink left in it. Not, you know, a lot, but a little. So this is a Platinum President. And I'm not on screen. Platinum President with a broad cursive italic nib. And the ink in it is still Noodler's Rabaul Red. And if you follow, whoops, R A B A U L, if you follow the channel An Ink Guy, he actually uh, did a review of this ink this week. Now he's not the one that sent me this ink, 
But I just thought it was funny that I'm experiencing this ink for the first time right when he did a review on it. He liked it, it seemed. He's definitely got very high energy videos. Not the slow, sedate pace of my videos. He also gets them done a lot faster than I do. He, he puts out almost a video a day, which is just an amazing pace. I do not know how, but he does it. Well, probably batch filming. Because I could have a video a day if I just publish all the ones sitting on my hard drive. I had something intelligent to say. Oh, Platinum uh, 3776. I'm going to be doing a... Before I ink it up be, or clean it out, because I've got somebody that might be interested in one of my Music Nib pens, I thought I'd do a Music Nib comparison of the three Music Nibs I have. So I'm going to do that this week. I'll probably film it. It's supposed to get up around 100 degrees tomorrow. That sounds like a good time to film a pen video. Definitely not going to do too much outside at those temperatures. Uh, the ink in it is a Rosh Shizuku. I'm a hero. which is a nice sky blue. It's one of the inks I'm trying to use up, so I've got a little more, well, so I have a smaller ink collection because it's actually kind of gross how much ink I have right now. So I just want to use it all up. Go back to, well, more minimal collection. Why? just bothers me to have that much ink and it's not like I'm in a place where I can just trade it around or give it to people because hey, here's a bottle of ink what do I do with it oh whatever all right this did not go with me to my class and my trip this stayed home I inked up a, a pilot custom 823 with the same ink uh, this is emptying out, and uh, mainly I just didn't want to put this one at risk. You know, not that I'd be thrilled about it, but I can replace the um, Pilot Custom 823. I cannot replace this. This is a 1960s pen, and although it didn't cost me much, I like it. So, it stayed safely at home. And now it is serving as my daily writer pen again until it runs out of ink. Usually in the summer I run through several pens to be my daily writer pens. And it's always fun to ink up this one. Now is it a particularly amazing pen? No. Uh, but that's part of its charm is it's just perfect for daily writing purposes, for writing on just about any paper, writing in a notebook, not going through the ink super fast. It's just a good pen. And what else could you really ask for? And my last pen. Okay, there's that noise again. I don't know what that was. My last pen was owned by, let's see if I can read it here, Carmen Jordan. Doggone! That was a weird noise. Um, anyway, I, was re I did a book review recently of that Tetrasomy 2. Um, science fiction novel and he met the main character is into collecting fountain pens that are engraved with other people's names because he feels I don't know like a bigger connection to him or something so I guess somehow I'm connected to Carmen Jordan and I went to write her name <laughs> Schaefer Schaefer Balance. 
350 and the ink in it is Califolio Aurora and I gotta say I uh, didn't notice till I put them all on the page but this isn't like the most exciting batch of inks I've ever done and I've got several of them sitting over there that I can't show you yet full of Parker Quink washable blue because I did film the writing sample so my pen pals are getting a lot of Parker Quink washable blue right now and so are my notes and things alright so I wasn't going to show my face like this this week because it's hot even though it's late at night and yes I do have an air conditioner but it's I opened up the windows too soon <laughs> it's hot in here I'm sweating but anyway I, uh, I, uh, I don't know how many of you are followers of Sherry Zek okay thought I had the microphone fixed but I guess not so she reviews um, fountain pens usually nicer ones than I do but uh, this week, she's apparently been having a lot of trouble with YouTube and uh, strikes against her channel and things, so she's taken down most of her videos. So I'm hoping... Hey folks, um, I've hidden all my videos because I have had issues with YouTube this week suspending my account for um, content violations or community standards violations or something. They won't say exactly what. So, uh, because I don't think talking about fountain pens is all that racy, um, I, th I can only assume that my account has been spoofed and somebody's been doing bad things under my name. So, um, I don't know how much longer I will be able to, um, keep this channel going. Uh, if this is, uh sad for any of you who enjoyed my commentary i'm sorry but i don't uh, you know i don't want to lose all my access to youtube and google products so i need to take some precautions here all right hope you're having a good day notice i'm not in tie-dye because this is a serious video uh, give her pl i'm hoping to give her plate a little more publicity through my slightly larger channel um I mean, I'm pretty small fry, but I was hoping to give her plate a little bit more publicity so that she can get it solved, whatever it is. You know, occasionally it happens just, uh, you know, either somebody goes after a particular channel. I remember uh, years ago, Stephen Brown got taken down for like a whole weekend um, and then was mysteriously reinstated. Um, recently, a YouTube channel called Right Wing Watch was taken down and... Uh, then was mysteriously reinstated several hours later so I'm I'm hoping whatever is going on there can be resolved and and maybe if somebody out there one of you knows somebody at YouTube that can get this thing figured out so I put a link to her video down below I'll just play a, a clip or two from it here and then we'll get on to my uh, travel video which What's wrong with the microphone? Because it, it's been working just great all week. So maybe it doesn't like the heat either. So as you could tell from the beginning, I went on a little trip this past week. I went to Fargo, North Dakota. Um, immediately got on the wrong exit off of 94. Yay. But <laughs> I was a little disturbed by the traffic there. I am definitely not used to that kind of driving. But anyway, uh, I found my motel. And... Uh, Took a class, it was actually 30 miles north of Fargo in, in a, the Northern Cass School on personalized learning. And uh, first day rode up with uh, the other people I was taking the class with. Second day I drove up myself because unlike them, I wasn't headed home. I was at it on a further trip. But I just have to say that Northern Cass School is flipping beautiful. Um, it's, it's a little... It's well, it's bigger than mine, but it's it's a whole bunch of little towns that instead of like trying to be the last man standing or whatever, they got together and said, "Hey, let's build a school, not in one of our towns." So they put it out in a field, <laughs> but beautiful school and doing a lot of great things. So I I'm very pleased with it. Um, other than you know, I don't want to live at that end of the state. It would be a, I think it would be an interesting place to work. 
But anyway, left uh, Northern Cass, headed on, uh, went through one of the little towns, actually, that makes up Northern Cass. It was called Hunter. Uh, our governor is actually from Arthur, which is another one of the little towns. So that's interesting, a little bit of trivia. Uh, more of our governors are from Cass County than any other county in the state. I'm not real sure why, but there you go. Anyway, so I continued north, and one of the things you may have noticed already is eastern North Dakota is pretty darn flat. It, you know, it's the bottom of Lake Agassiz, which no longer exists. It's a prehistoric lake. But uh, that's also why they have such amazing black soil. Um, I would love to import their soil from my garden from eastern North Dakota. So I journeyed north on basically back. So I journeyed north on basically back roads. Um, you know, a lot of the towns, I kind of skirted the edges. There, there were a few I wanted to see, but I really didn't tour them too much. I went through Laramore, but forgot to include footage of that. Uh, it's there. I just didn't feel like searching for it because I don't really care about Laramore. Sorry if you're from Laramore. But anyway, continued north. Um, I did care about a town called Mayville. Uh, it's the home of the Mayport CG Public School, which is so named because it's made out of the towns of Mayville, May, or I'm sorry, Mayville, Portland, and uh, the CG is because two little towns, Clifford and Galesburg, were added. Um, I, I don't care too much about their school. Um, I just find it interesting that there's a college in that town. I didn't tour the campus too much. Um, not that interested but i did swoop by it and i don't know if remember if i put it in this footage or not because i'm recording the audio separately but anyway and then of course portland you're like wait i just got out of mayville and portland is like right there so okay that same microphone trouble showed up again so uh okay and to be fair the microphone is six years old but i'm just going to record it on the laptop microphone and hope for the best so where was I? Oh yeah, okay, so I headed north from uh, Mayville, again, following the back roads, uh, hit a few small towns, um, they're, they're, they're mostly small there, the schools are small, they're, except for Mayville, they're basically smaller than mine, and uh, continued north, but as I got north, I started to see that there are more and more trees, which is uh, a sign of something. And eventually pulled into the town of Cavalier, North Dakota, which was my plan. I like Cavalier. Um, I, I, that's a town I could live in. It's uh, not like super scenic around Cavalier, but there is a lot of great scenery within just a short drive or walk. Because they have a hiking slash biking path out to their uh, Icelandic State Park. And you can even rent bicycles in town, which, holy cow, blood red North Dakota and they are renting out bicycles. So that is very, very cool. Uh, the school is a little smaller than mine. It's got a nice older building on it. It looked like they'd done some renovation on it. So I, I guess there's some controversy over there over, you know, whether they should renovate schools or whether one of them's going to close or whatever. But, you know, they've got a pretty decent enrollment at that school, so I think their future is fairly secure. Uh, but I was getting tired and, you know, it was getting towards evening and I decided to head to my motel room in Langdon, which was about 30 miles west of there. So Langdon, I, last time I went through Langdon, I honestly didn't stop i just kind of drove through it and said oh um we have played langdon a few times <laughs> trying to get to state with our football team and they've beaten us every time but uh anyway so i stayed the night in langdon it, it had a very nice main street um the restaurant i was hoping to eat at decided to close early that day so i had a, a gross gas station hamburger for supper <laughs> but Anyway, so I had, uh, so I was in Langdon. I drove back uh, to Cavalier the next day. On the way, I saw this sign and it said Mountain, North Dakota. I was just like, okay, I've got to see a town called Mountain that's in North Dakota. It was a cute little town, a little, you know, a little under 100 people. 
not a lot going on there. There's a mountain chalet, which is interesting. But, uh, yeah, not a lot there. And, uh, yeah, so it wasn't too much of a detour. And, and on the way, I, I don't have the... The driving footage is basically useless, but I've got the... Uh, I did a YouTube short on it about the Cavalier. I'm going to call it Air Base because I don't really know what it is, but I guess they do radar stuff there. So that was that was interesting, especially picking it up on my radio. But anyway, I uh, stopped at Icelandic State Park. Uh, Icelandic State Park has a very nice museum. In fact, I'd like to go back there specifically and have more time specifically there. Um, there, there are buildings. I was able to get into the church. I don't know if it was left unlocked by accident or if it was meant to be unlocked. But all the other buildings seem to be locked. Uh, but I would guess they're open for tours. I'm not real sure. Uh, there was a nature preserve, which uh, I hiked. That, took, that was so worth it. In fact, I've got a video about it. And that took up my morning. And then I toured around the campground a little. There's a lake there because there's a dam. And uh, a lot of camp camping. Um, looked like a nice campground. I mean, I'm not much of a camper. I'm more... Of, I, I have camped. I'm not against camping. It's just not, like, my favorite thing to do. But uh, I'd rather stay in a motel room. But anyway, <laughs> it was a nice-looking campground. And then I uh, continued on to Cavalier where I had lunch. Um, instead of a gross gas station hamburger, I had a gross gas station pizza, but whatever. I guess I could have stopped at a restaurant, but uh, I was still dealing with that phobia about going into restaurants. I did get over it in, later on in the tour. But anyway, so then I went on... Um, and I started to see trouble because there were raindrops appearing on my windshield. Now, there had been rain in the forecast. I'd gotten dripped on a few times during the hike, but overall it had been a good hike. Uh, but the rain was definitely coming down harder. So I drove up to Walhalla, North Dakota, which is a very cool name for a town. And in Walhalla, I, uh, of course, I toured the Main Street. You know, it's it's a smaller town than Cavalier, and, and you can tell, but it's isolated enough that it has, I won't say it's an amazing main street, but it's a has a main street. And it's another one. It seems like all these eastern schools have kept their old built school buildings and then just added on to them. So, you know, Walhalla was another one that had its old, old 1930s building as part of it. Uh, but I continued west of, Cav of uh, Walhalla, and I ended up, uh, I headed into the Pembina Gorge, which is, you know, cut by the Pembina River. And there's a Pembina Gorge recreational area there. And so I went there. Uh, the hiking maps I got for that weren't very good. So whoever's in charge of that, maybe work on that a little. Uh, but I, and I will upload my video of that hike. But that hike got cut short as the rain just started coming down harder and harder. I'm like, you know... If I keep going, this isn't going to be fun. It's just going to be misery. So, went back to the car. I uh, drove around the gorge a little, just exploring gravel roads. You know, I was close to Canada, so I had this vague fear in my head that, oh shoot, I'll pull out on some highway and it'll turn out to be a provincial highway and I'll get in trouble for crossing the border illegally. And then I'll get hauled off to some gulag in northern Saskatchewan by the Canadian Mounties, although I guess it would be Manitoba there. But anyway, um, actually I've heard the Saskatchewan gulags are worse than the Manitoba gulags. Just FYI, if you're getting arrested in Canada. But anyway, so uh, that was fun, any, despite that lingering fear in my brain. But eventually I ended up back on the highway. Because I, you know, I didn't have a map of the roads, but I knew kind of roughly what I needed to do. Um, and... I passed road I had passed on the way to the gorge, and it said Brick Mine Road. And this time I thought, well, the hiking is out. I wonder what's down this way. And I thought it was kind of a cool name. So I drove down there, found a family down there that had had the exact same thought. 
Uh, they'd been a little later to the hiking, so they got to the hiking when it started to pour rain. So they were just driving around and saw the name of the road. So we were there for the same reason. And there was a very nice 1905 metal bridge down there, so I enjoyed that. I took some photographs. We talked a little. They left, and I did some videoing, but... This will all be in the eventual driving videos whenever I get those made. Um, gotta fix the microphone first. But then I headed back and I stopped at the Vang Bridge, which is a modern bridge and not that photogenic. But I, you know, but it's in the gorge, so I took pictures around it. And then I made a fateful choice. So the last time I went through Pembina Gorge, I took the road to the right. And it eventually takes you out on the highway, and then you head south to Langdon. But, see, the perk was, since I had already reserved a second night in Langdon, I was in no hurry, and it was the afternoon, so I thought, oh, what's the worst that could happen in a 21-year-old car? Okay. <laughs> so I headed south, or, yeah, on the left fork, and that took me through some very interesting scenery. Now, eventually, it turned into farmland. But uh, it was kind of nice. It just And I knew roughly what highways were there. So I knew eventually if I either go south or I go west, I'll run into one of them. And uh, so I just kept alternating south and east when I would get to a turn um, if I had a choice. Sometimes there was just a T and you're like, okay, <laughs> south it is. But anyway, it was kind of nice to see that back country. And then eventually... I. I got on the highway almost at Langdon. Spent the next night, spent that night in Langdon. Uh, spent that evening. I did not go to the restaurant. I just didn't feel like going out again. So I walked as far as the grocery store in the rain and got myself a frozen dinner <laughs> at the grocery store. That's what I had for supper. Oh my God, I sound pathetic. But then the next day I got on the road again. Uh, stopped. And of course, you... you you're out of the forest now. You're back in, like, oh, farm country. More green and tree-ish than where I live, but still. Um, I stopped at Nakoma, North Dakota, because there's a very cool pyramid, which uh, you don't, s you know, you can kind of see off in the distance there. It doesn't show up really on the driving footage, but uh, I put it on my Instagram, so check that out. Um, and then I toured Nakoma. That town was killed with that base closed. And the one Cavalier, by the way, is still active, so that's interesting. But, and uh, so I toured Nakoma, and then I headed south again. And then I did that crazy thing again. I'm like, well, I know I need to get over to the next major highway south. Why don't I do something different? So the first small town I saw, because I, I had some letters to mail, because I'd used that extra time in the motel room the night before to write some pen pal letters. I just thought, I'm going to mail them. Well, it didn't look like the Nakoma post office was active. So, But this town, which I forgot to write down its name, but this little town, whatever it was, I think it started with an L. Uh, I pulled off and uh, mailed my letters at the post office, and then I headed off onto this time paved county highways and I just kind of ducked and weaved and whatever and I ended up at a place I have not visited in like 20 years because I pulled out on the highway I wanted at this little town called Webster now Webster is cool because I used to have this hobby of going around and photographing old schools I kind of got bored with that but Webster had a very cool old school, an old wooden building. But uh, it had been restored as, as a hunting cabin. And years ago, I like I'm saying, maybe, I mean, not 20 years ago, let's say 15 or 16 years ago, uh, I took pictures of it. Well, it's a little worse for wear. The paint's peeling off of it. I think whoever bought it got bored with it. Uh, but I took some more pictures of it, which was good. And then drove on to the very nearby Devil's Lake, North Dakota, which is a pretty nice city. So I parked by the Episcopalian Church, which if you're ever there, that's a very cool old historical church. I, Looking back now, I kind of wish I'd built up the nerve and seen if the door was open, but I didn't have the nerve, so I didn't look. Uh, 
I took pictures of that, which none of them turned out very well. I uh, took pictures of the old high school, which is now their junior high school. It's a very Art Deco 1930s building, very cool looking. Uh, walked around the downtown for a while, because by then I definitely needed to stretch my legs, because I hadn't had a hike yet that day, so, you know, it's just stiff from sitting in a car all morning. Um, I stopped and had supper at a Mexican restaurant that night, or that afternoon, sorry, because there was a Mexican restaurant in Devil's Lake, and uh, realized that's the first I'd been in a restaurant since before the pandemic. You know, I, I've picked up to go, but I haven't actually stopped to eat in a restaurant. So that felt really good. Although with the Delta variant going around, that may be the last time for a while. But anyway, then I continued south through the actual lake that the city is named after, Devil's Lake. Um, this lake has been growing since the 1980s. It has swallowed whole towns. There are dikes all over. The roads are raised up. It's just crazy. Uh, this has been a drier year, so it was down a little. But still, it is... Where I was driving here shouldn't have been in the lake, and it was. So my next stop was uh, at, at the Spirit Lake uh, Reservation. Uh, there's a place that, when I worked up here, was known as the uh, as Sully's National Sully's Hill National Game Preserve, but it has been renamed to White Horse Hill National Game Preserve, which I prefer uh, because, after all, Sully was one of the guys that stole their land away from them. So uh, I had been to this game preserve once before basically as a field trip with a bunch of the kids from Fort Totten, which is nearby. And so I didn't really get to enjoy it or appreciate it like I normally might have. But here I was by myself, although weirdly enough, I ran into the aunt of my, the senior that lives like a block away from my house who just graduated this year. So that was unexpected, but I did some hiking there. I walked and, and again, I'll have a video of that up in the next few weeks, when I probably when I get this microphone deal fixed. But anyway, I uh, part of the hike is a floating boardwalk, and then there's another part of the hike that says, if not flooded. <laughs> so the part of the hike is on the old roadbed that uh, had been flooded. Well, drought year, so I was about a foot above the water, so I was able to walk it. So that was good. I drove around Fort Totten. That was, uh, I will confess, uh, Fort Totten was looking a little worse for the wear. I, uh, you know, the community college where I'd worked was looking good. But uh, the neighborhood I drove through, I don't remember buildings being tagged with graffiti when I worked there before. Maybe I'm, you know, rose-colored glasses and all that, but I don't remember seeing that before. So I don't know if, couple of kids got hold of some spray paint and just painted the town one night or what happened but that was sad to see um, then I looked at the high school there which has no windows but there'd been a lot of construction around the high school so that was good to see including a, a CTE center uh, which I'm hoping is working in collaboration with that community college because uh, that's a great opportunity for the kids there so then I continued south. I uh, drove through Cheyenne, North Dakota, which is kind of a cool-looking town. There's not much there. Most of the buildings are empty, but uh, it's a cool-looking town. And then further on to New Rockford, which uh, when I worked in Fort Totten, I stayed in New Rockford because, you know, there wasn't really a place to stay, although I've learned since that there was, uh, in Fort Totten. So I... Uh, but anyway, I would stay in Fort, in uh, New Rockford. And I always thought that had a very nice main street. A little strange with the railroad kind of breaking it up. But very nice main street. It, it's actually a very nice town. And I like their hardware store a lot. Uh, but then I continued south. And, you know, you're getting flatter and flatter. But you start to see more potholes. Because you're almost into prairie pothole country by this point. 
uh, to Carrington, North Dakota, which uh, has a nice roundabout. That had been built, I think it had been there, I actually, I don't remember if it was there when I was working there. I've been through Carrington once or twice since I worked up that area, so I don't know how new the traffic circle, the roundabout, sorry, traffic circles are bad, roundabouts are good. Uh, Carrington's a nice town, a little bigger than my town, has a nice main street, has a nice business section. That's an attractive, well-kept town. Um, and then I took the uh, random collection of county roads to take me from Carrington to Woodworth to Medina, which I'll have to look up when I do the driving video. But I always enjoyed that shortcut because it goes through prairie pothole country. Uh, what that is, it's a whole bunch of small wetlands and lakes full of wildlife and ducks and things. And the road is very twisty and windy. Some years, I remember, it was partially flooded. So, you know, you'd be like, oh, there's only one lane here because the water's on the other side of the road and those kind of things. But I always enjoyed it. And got to Medina, which is on the interstate. Medina, other than being the gateway to this wonderful road, really, I have no attachment to it. Well, it's another small town, but, eh. And then uh, spent the night in Steele, North Dakota. I did swoop through Steele. Steele is about 40 miles outside of Bismarck um, on the interstate. So I didn't expect much business section, and there wasn't. There was a main street that I was surprised how many businesses there were for as close as they are to Bismarck. So I say good for them for shopping local and keeping your town alive. Um, then I hit Bismarck. And since I'm doing this without the video playing, I'll have to edit it all in, but... I was asked to pick up some uh, local landmarks in Bismarck. Uh, some of them I photographed, so uh, this isn't going to be the best. Uh, but you know, I made sure, of course, there, there's a hamburger place that he said that he used to live near. You, you actually call on the telephone to order your hamburgers. Like, you sit down at a table and there's a telephone at your table. So you order over the telephone, which is different. Um, it's called the Wood House, I think. I've only eaten there like once or twice. Sorry. Um, of course, I figured I'd tour the, I'd go by the Capitol. It was Sunday, so, you know, it wasn't like anyone was going in. Um, I was going to get the Bismarck High School, but I ended up taking a different route because I was trying to get, was it Bob's Big, Bob's Big Boy or Big Roy or something like that. Uh, which I remembered roughly where it was, but not exactly, and uh, was by it before I'm like, oh wait, that was it, and you know, traffic, I just like, oh no. I drove down Main Street. So yeah, I didn't do a very good job if you're looking for a trip down memory lane, I'm sorry. Uh, Bismarck has improved a lot since I moved to this state. You know, their their downtown is just better. I will say that. It's also grown a lot. So is Fargo. Which, you know, the, come to think of it, the two are probably related. But anyway, then I drove through Mandan, which is right across the river from Bismarck, because I wanted to get on old Highway 10. So back in the day, you used to go, you know, before the interstate, you used to take old Highway 10 if you wanted to go to Dickinson from Bismarck. And to this day, they still have not paved all of Highway 10, which we'll get to in a second. But it, it's a nice drive if you have the time. It, it takes you through rolling countryside. Um, very different from what I had ju seen just like the day before in the eastern end of the state. That, no, that's a understatement of the year. Uh, first town I ran into is, of course, New Salem, which is famous for Salem Sioux, the uh, giant Holstein up on their butte. Which I totally didn't think of when I was there. I just drove down Main Street and looked at their school. Um, but then I continued west. And shortly after you leave New Salem, the pavement ends. And you spend many, many miles driving on gravel. Uh, shortly before I got to Glen Ullen, the rain picked up. Hardcore. And I stopped in Glen Ullen, well, to stretch my legs, use the bathroom, and... Uh, I must have gotten lunch there because I don't remember stopping anywhere else for lunch. 
at a gas station, of course. And, uh, yeah, I'm exciting. And while I was in there, the lightning hit, the power blinked off in the gas station, and the whole gas station was lit up real bright, and the thunder rumbled, like, right over top of us. So, it must have hit real close. But anyway, it continued on from Glen Allen to a town called Hebron. Hebron's another town, you know, it's just a small town, you know, just whatever. But, uh, decent looking Main Street, I didn't realize how many businesses it still had. But I decided, since I'm here, I've always seen the sign on the interstate for Fort Sauerkraut, I'm going to find it. Well, I found it. Up a really steep hill to get to it, but... Yeah, that was... I won't bother visiting again, so I, I should have a video about that eventually also. <laughs> um, I'm glad I stopped, glad I saw it. You know, it, it's been good to get out. And especially do some things I've just always said, oh, I don't have time. I Well, I took the time. But, yeah, Fort Sauerkraut wasn't one of the highlights of the trip. Um, continue on. You know, stop, drove through Richerton, which has a very nice Catholic cathedral and monastery and an abbey. Um, the celibate life is not for me at all. Uh, but, uh, it was interesting, you know, it's interesting that people do choose that. Um, I, th well, it was Sunday, so of course the everything was closed. You know, they've, they've got a visitor center, but it's the Sabbath, so they obviously take that seriously. So I just drove on. But I will get there. It's close enough, I could make it a day trip. Uh, whipped through Taylor, North Dakota, which is a very small town. Um, the big thing with Taylor is they, as small as they are, they do a horse fest every year where they have this whole day spent doing horse farming things, like exhibits. They've got a whole, I won't call it a fairgrounds, but whole grounds devoted to horse farming stuff. Definitely worth a visit. Usually that coincides with an important day here where I live, but I've heard rumors that that important day isn't going to happen this summer, so I may see if they're doing the Horse Fest this year. I know last year they canceled it because of the pandemic, same as us last year. Uh, we canceled our important thing. So, hit Dickinson, grocery shop, because I didn't know when I'd get home. Uh, and then I decided, you know, that's where the scenic byway ends, is in Dickinson, but I thought, no, I want to see it to the bitter end. Because it continues on through South Hart and Belfield. So South Hart is just too close to Dickinson. It does not have much of a downtown. So, you know, I drove around it. So when I eventually released the full driving video, you can see it there. Uh, Belfield does have a downtown. But again, it's so close to Dickinson that most of the buildings are empty. So, yeah, then I continued on south on Highway 85 to get to my town. And I thought, I'm going to give my town the same treatment as I gave the others. So, uh, here you only get to tour down Main Street on a Sunday evening. I guess Sunday afternoon. Whatever time it says on the dash cam. Or on the, yeah, dash cam. Um, and I toured by the school, but I'm not going to include that here. Again, when we do the full driving video, maybe I'll include that. So, anyway, that was my big tour. So, you've got some hiking videos, whether you like them or not, they're coming. And uh, some background footage for some driving videos. And it is late at night. And somebody needs to figure out what's wrong with this microphone or he may be buying a new one. So, yeah, I hope the audio wasn't too bad using a laptop. I prefer the sound of the microphone but it is what it is i want to get this thing done and this is taking long enough so we'll talk to you later bye bye